Hello, Namibia, and welcome to your daily lunchtime show where we get to catch up on current events and headlines that are in the news. My name is Priska Agnolo, and you are watching NMH at 1. So let us have a look at the incoming news this morning. Amidst the controversy surrounding the city of Vintuk, who is said to have cut off the water and electricity of various state institutions that didn't pay their accounts, Vintuk's mayor, Job Amupanda, yesterday announced that the city itself no longer owes NAM power any money. According to Amupanda, the balance stands at zero dollars. The city has previously been accused of owing NAM power 94 million Namibian dollars. And now we move on to our COVID-19 monitor for today. Last week, another 43 healthcare workers tested positive for the virus. This is nine more than the previous week. Only six deaths have been reported in this frontline group, for which the fatality rate has declined to only 0.3%. No new cases were reported amongst health workers in three regions, which are Hardap, Kunene, and Omosati. The largest number of new cases, which are 11, occurred in the Vintuk district, followed by eight new cases in the Irongo region. Other new cases amongst health workers are distributed as follows. Five each in Oshana and Kavango West, three new cases in Oshodonjupa, Oshikoto and Kavango East, two in Omaheke, and single cases in the Ohangwena, Zambezi and Karas regions. The latest quarantine data will be mapped out tomorrow. As always, next we take a look at the video news clips from around the country. In our first video, Mkariku Amagulu, who is the Deputy Director of Arts, talks about the latest initiative to tackle the country's archaic legislative uh, framework in terms of copyright. She introduces the Intellectual Property and Local Content Initiative, which will work to finalize new copyright legislation to replace outdated laws, which will, which will promote copyright literacy among citizens and to empower Namibian creators to earn a living off of their works at home and via the internet. Ogeto Craig was there. My name is Mukariko Amarulu. I'm the Director of Arts. Uh, we are running the IPLC project, Intellectual Pro Content Project, um, that we are currently implementing. Uh, the project is funded by the EU, UNESCO, um, a project, an initiative that aims to improve legal frameworks, uh, particularly pertaining to the cultural and creative industry. Uh, <laughs> we, BIPA is our partner on this project, obviously, because they play a very big role when it comes to the legislation on copyright. Uh, and they have currently been uh, reworking the Copyright Act. And we are coming on board to ensure that the cultural and creative industries are well taken care of in that revision. Uh, so that that our, um, our community, which is artists or creators, uh, benefit from the enactment of the new Copyright Act. I think right Right now, in terms of the old Copyright Act, it didn't take into consideration uh, quite a number of uh, disciplines, creative disciplines, uh, so meaning that people don't have anywhere to go for them to get some support or protection in terms of their creations. Um, but even apart from that, uh, the old Copyright Act comes from 1994, meaning that it's quite outdated and doesn't take into consideration a lot of uh, things like the digital environment, for instance, uh, which are things that we really want to make sure are part of the, the act that will uh, come to. Yeah, um, NASCAM, you will have to go and get the full story from NASCAM. Uh, however, what I know is that NASCAM is registered to a South African body uh, that also monitors uh, their members' uh, uh, music uh, on online. And uh, for the first time, they received a payment last year. Uh, 
Uh, yes, it's not easy because we don't have the the proper legal frameworks uh, to allow monetization from online uh, presentation of uh, uh, creative expressions. Uh, so meaning that this project is only one leg of uh, what we hope to come out in future. Uh, so we are looking at uh, getting the trade policy uh, revised. So it also uh, allows for people to monetize from their work. Uh, we are looking at uh, trying to push the government also to, to uh, pass the Cyber Crime um, Act because it's important in terms of uh, copyright. Uh, it touches on a number of things that deal with copyright. So there is a lot of work that still needs to be done to ensure that people really benefit from all this. So the copyright revision is really just, I think, the first. And now for our second video. The Namibia Uniformed Forces or Services Sports Association, which is an umbrella body under the Namibia Sports Commission, was launched yesterday. NMH's fanwell, Shinedima, captured some of the highlights. The Namibian Sport Commission have allocated the office for uniformed forces at the same time for boxing and other sports forms at Katutura Youth Complex. So that's me. You don't need to come to any Namibia Defense Force or original looking for us. We have an office where we've been blessed and given by the Namibia Sports Commission. It's also with the Ministry of Sport. So we are really think, and it's it made easier because it's more with the people there in Capitola, and uh, we really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. And now we jump into the front pages of various Namibian newspapers. The Algamana Zeitung is leading with an article about mounting concerns regarding the latest version of the controversial formerly disadvantaged empowerment bill, which has been labeled as unconstitutional. The private sector apparently had the last opportunity to submit its comments regarding the bill until the end of February. The Namibian Sun has a lead on the assets of the fish rod accused that are being seized by the Prosecutor General, amongst them being an engagement ring belonging to former Justice Minister Saki Shangala and a 500,000 Namibian dollar Rolex watch from former investment manager Ricardo Gustavo. The Republican is leading with an article about a teacher that is accused of having hit a grade 11 scholar and breaking the child's jaw in the process. An investigation by the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture that was, launched, that was launched last year in July, shortly after the incident occurred, is now completed. The Namibian is reporting on a woman who survived a panga attack at the hands of her former boyfriend and is now living in fear as he has been released from prison and started threatening her again. The New Era is leading with a story about the findings of Namibia's recently published Human Development Index, which experts warning that urgent action is needed in order to combat rising inequality levels in the country. And now we move right into the inside pages of various Namibian newspapers as well. On its page two, the Algamine and Zeitung leads with a story about local importers and manufacturers of hand sanitizers that feel disadvantaged by high import levies and strict certification processes. They claim that imported hand san sanitizers are exempted from those strict standards. On page three, the Namibian Sun is reporting on the expectations of the Ministry of Environment and Tourism to generate at least 13 million Namibian dollars from the auctioning of 170 elephants. The ministry denies claims that the auctioning process is being conducted in a non-transparent way. 
The Republic Kane on its page two is featuring an article about Air Namibia's interim CEO, Tio Mberirua, who worked for the airline for just over eight months and who will receive a severance pay of $651,879 Namibian dollars once the airline's liquidation has been concluded. On page three of the Namibian, we can read about the tabling of amendments to the Compacting Rape Act of 2000. Justice Minister Yvonne Dausep is proposing longer sentences for perpetrators. New Era on its page three reports on the government that is responding to the flood victims in the Kavango West region. The authorities claim that they are doing everything in their power to assist the affected residents. The office of the Prime Minister had been called out by the Kavango West Regional Council at the beginning of the week for not delivering help fast enough. And in all three NMH publications, you will also find today's Market Watch and My NA Property. The Market Watch leads with an article about the fuel prices that went up for the past two months, but who are still lower in comparison to last year. Today's My NA Property reports about the preservation of, of traditional homes, discussing how they are built and what advantages they pose. And now for our beloved interview section for today. Ronel Raudemeyer and Johanan Katsia are traveling the south of the country this week. While in Mariental, Ronel chatted to Davi de Klerk, the deputy chairperson of the Namibia Agronomy Producers Association, who spoke about the situation five weeks after damage was caused to infrastructure due to floods. For the full interview, watch the next episode of Agri Monitor. here this morning with Mr. Davi de Klerk. He's the Deputy Chairperson of the Agronomy Asso Producers Association and we're here at the Hard Up Scheme next to Mariental. Davi, it's about five weeks since you had quite a lot of structural damage to maize fields uh, here at the, at the Hard Up Scheme. What is currently the situation? How full is the dam? Um, and how how much have you recuperated after that damage? Yeah, good morning, Ronel. Um, the damage that was done by water infestation into the fields, uh, fields that was flooded, was not uh, the fish river by means of releases out of the dam. It was more the uh, David River that came up uh, down in flood and uh, some of the embankments of the David uh, gave way and uh, it was a gradual in inflow into the fields, the maize fields. A lot of maize fields was flooded, some had to be replanted. Um, and unfortunately some of the maize was already knee height and uh, it cannot be replaced it was too late to be replaced so uh, earth movage was uh, unfortunate so uh, the fields will have to be leveled again um, which is obviously a uh, major problem because of the fact that uh, there's not going to be any monetary income uh, regarding those uh, damage. Um, the dam at the moment is at 71.3%, which we're quite thankful for, um, because we've got a double cropping planting season ahead, which we know now that we are secure by means of water capacity, uh, so we can fully plant the whole scheme. Um, I don't know if I can maybe just give an overview of the whole season ahead. Please, uh, please, what I would say is that unfortunately uh, it was a good thing that Namibia got a lot of rain, um, especially the uh, small stock uh, area. But 
the demand for Lucerne, which was quite big in, on Harlap, is down to almost zero. So what's going to happen is a lot of Lucerne is going to be taken out and I think will be replaced by wheat uh, for the next season. At the current situation is that there is approximately 500 hectares of maize planted, which is going to be around about, uh, I think, five and a half to 6,000 tons yield. Uh, that's going to be realized uh, for this current season. The harvesting season normally takes place around about uh, beginning of May. Unfortunately, we did not get hold of a ultra-fast growing cultivar uh, regarding the maize. Uh, so I would uh, preempt that the harvesting season is going to go ahead until most probably uh, deep into August this year. Um, the maize at Hadap it, uh, itself is looking very good. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited. We've got an infestation of the fall armyworm, uh, which we are at this stage fighting by means of crop dust, crop spraying by helicopter, uh, because the maize is already quite high. You can't get in with a tractor and implements anymore, uh, sprayers, etc. Uh, so I think uh, we're looking ahead at a very good season, but uh, the Lucerne market is down to zero. So uh, the monetary pressure by means of cash flow is still there. Um, but uh, we're getting there <laughs> and we are farmers. Um, we are always looking ahead and we're always staying positive and seeing the bright side. Um, two, three weeks ago we had a Flash, flash flood at the uh, Hadap scheme uh, by means of the Dabi River, a river that uh, or again uh, overflowed uh, its banks into the, the canal. Uh, and um, unfortunately, there's five, six panels that is giving way at the moment. Uh, we can't uh, replace it at the current stage because of the critical needage of water on the maize crop at the moment. So uh, the plan of action is to go into May month where a lot of or almost all the water is going to be taken away on the wheat harvest. Um, all material is already on site and when the canal will be um, repaired the whole cleaning action of the canal will take place, etc. So uh, there's no need for immediate uh, reparation of the canal. There's uh, ample water supply at the moment, and uh, I think actually it's 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 looking good. Um, we can be thankful. Last year um, we turned at. 6.6% in the dam, the water was cut off. Um, so it was it was a dark time for the Hardup scheme and uh, the Lord provided and obviously we are quite positive for the whole year lying ahead. Um, and uh, maybe just one interesting thing is uh, some issue that is on the lips of everyone in the country uh, and at the Hardup scheme um, is the big infestation of the uh, reeds in the riverbed, as well as uh, as well as the Dabi River, etc. Um, two three weeks ago, I had a meeting with the office of the prime minister, uh, representative of the OPM, and uh, I gave him a comprehensive study that that I tried to do regarding the whole reed spraying program. The rationale behind that action uh, from our side of the Farmers Association is to see if we can get help, monetary help, help from abroad, uh, especially the German uh, sector, to try and uh, help us to get a permanent solution 
for the reed infestation by means of uh, spraying either by a drone or helicopter etc that will take approximately six years my calculation to uh, to clear the reeds on a permanent basis uh, if uh, the crop spraying can be done at least twice a year um, but in short that is more or less the situation at hard up i don't know if there's any else you want to know uh, but that is in short. Davi, if you harvest the maize only in August will that not impact on your wheat production this year? Yeah unfortunately uh, it will have a big impact uh, being that for every month that you plant late you lose approximately in, in yield terms you use approx uh, lose approximately one ton per hectare. The magic time to have your wheat in the ground and water is in Ju uh, June, July. So you will lose around about a month. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it will also have an impact on the closed border period, which is monitored by the Namibian Agronomic Board. The opening of the borders will most probably uh, be influenced by the fact that we are harvesting late. So the whole closure and opening uh, period of, of importing of uh, maize uh, will have to be shifted. And quite, quite obviously it will have to be uh, monitored by the economic board in a different way than previous seasons. Just one last question. Your contribution to maize production in the country from part of side, how, how big is that contribution? Um, Hadab is not the only or the sole irrigation uh, provider of maize in the country. There is also the green schemes in the north, which is unfortunately at this stage in a state of uh, not say decay but it's not producing uh, very optimum. much or to the optimum obviously not um, but the main contrib contributor to uh, maize in the country is obviously the maize triangle Kutavi, uh, Grootfontein, Shumet, area with um, uh, also a part in the east Hochfeld, uh, Gubabas etc. Hanap's contribution is approximately, I would say, 12 to 15 percent of the annual uh, maize uh, yield, total yield of Namibia, approximately 10 to 12 to 15 percent. Thank you so much for your time, and, and we really hope that the poor army worm doesn't cause too much uh, devastation in your fields. We are fighting it, uh, even if it's a uh, Quite expensive exercise. We're fighting it with the choppers at the end, and uh, we will win it. Thank you, Darwin, and good luck. It's a pleasure. All right, Namibia, thank you so much for watching NMH at One today because we have finally reached the end of our show. We wish you nothing but a blessed Sunday, actually a Wednesday ahead, sorry about that. I've been Priska Agnolo, your host for NMH at One, and please do stay tuned for a quick snapshot of the weather as well.